So a message which I got in yesterday, it was it, yeah, it was yesterday, was we are looking to set up a new podcast. We've got a budget of about three hundred pounds. What do we do? What do we buy? What's good? What works? What doesn't? So what I wanted to do as someone who's been through that journey, I've kind of gone from nothing. You know, what do I have around the house? Just general kind of stuff all the way through to starting to buy my first microphones, buy my first uh, interfaces and whatever, all the way through to lighting, cameras, whatever, to basically where we are now. But I don't know if you've noticed, but this camera moves and the, the depth of now that I've tried to go to to actually create a, a studio with moving cameras and all of the fancy lighting and audio and stuff. And actually there's a lot of stuff that you can't see which is through soundproofing and that kind of thing as well. My point is I kind of know what it's like to go from small spare bedroom starting off all the way through to I don't believe there's many kind of studios at this kind of level outside of like professional broadcast BBC kind of level um, but actually it's that journey and hopefully if I can add some value on what I went through and tips for different price points hopefully that kind of helps and it might be an interesting kind of bit um, my name's Steve if you want to check this out on YouTube like and subscribe that'd be cool as well okay so the first one free What can you do for free to launch a podcast? Lots of things. Um, but I'm going to start with some basics, which hopefully people have. And actually, if you're watching this, you've either got a laptop or a mobile phone or a PC because this is on the internet and you need to be on the internet to do a podcast. So that's my given. That's my like baseline. Basically, if you have a laptop or phone, you have the ability to do Zoom calls. So that is a way video call uh, to speak to someone else. And the other thing, I don't know if you can do it on mobiles, but definitely on laptops, you can record your calls. Same on Google Meets, same I think on Teams or Skype, whatever your video call preference thing is, brilliant. That happy days, that's a way to speak to people. Um, you can use it on your phone, there's lots of stuff that you can do, but even for instance, traditionally, a podcast is audio. A live stream or the video podcast, the recording of the podcast is what most people do now. It's what I do. It's what Joe Rogan does. It's what a lot of the big guys do because actually I consume a lot of my podcasts visually. I watch them on YouTube, but likewise, you also have a lot of people that don't and they just do audio. If you want to create just an audio podcast um, on your phone, you can do voice notes. Um, or even on, again on your laptop, you can record audio, just talk into it. And actually the truth is that's kind of fine. That's a good place to start. Um, the point is you don't need to buy mega expensive lighting studio, whatever, to actually kind of just get started. Lighting is a really big one because people always want to look good on camera. For free, the big one is natural light. So if you can ever sit near a window, basically you would have the window behind the laptop or camera so it shines on you. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. Um, there's lots of other stuff which I'm going to talk about actually as you get more and more expensive as we kind of go into it. But that's cool. Um, one of the ways that I do it, it's the way that I still do this and it's free. I use a software called OBS, which is open broadcast software. You download it and what you can do is create lots of different scenes. So everything you can see now with the ticker, the clock, the chat thing that comes up and uh, when I go between the countdown and that's all completely free. It takes a bit of time to set up, but you kind of can do it. And actually then the other thing which I'm going to write down is basically This was a game changer for me when I first set up because I didn't know where to start. I didn't know who to speak to. And basically, if you Google anchor.fm, that's what I use now, you can actually upload your audio files to that. And basically that's how you can do this for free and it hosts and holds on your files. But then when you set up all the other stuff, that can then ping that to Google, iTunes, Spotify, whatever. But the point is, it's free. So what we've then got is basically the ability to speak to a guest, uh, especially with COVID, Zoom or Teams or whatever is a great way to do that because actually you can speak to anyone in the world. Um, your camera or laptop will have a microphone, um, you know, so basically that should help kind of collect the audio. OBS is a great way to collect scenes and then you can put graphics on and do loads of cool stuff, but you don't have to. And then actually if you're looking to host it, basically anchor.fm is free. And then the other thing I would also say 
you want to push it on social. So as we talk about with any kind of business, you can have the best business in the world, but if people don't know about it, they can't buy it. So we really want the ability to take the stuff that we're talking about and have people discover it. Again, social media is free and you want to jump on lots of different hashtags and stuff um, to kind of, you know, uh, propel your message. The other thing which I'm going to mention before I forget is that when I first set up, which was in my bedroom, spare bedroom, it was a quite a small room. So it was probably seven foot deep. So in other words, from behind the camera to behind me, the warm, warm it was like seven foot, so it was pretty small. And it was about eight foot wide, but it was quite a small kind of boxy room. And the issue you have whenever you actually kind of record audio in a small room, you get echo. And one of the really big things that you, you want to try and crack down on uh, straight away is echo. So when you get to a posh expensive setup like this, you can have what are called sound curtains, which are really expensive and they go floor to ceiling and they work like a dream. That's what you know big broadcast people do. But you can use pillows. So basically take pillows from your bedroom, put them behind the camera so nobody can see them. And what it does, it just dampens the sound so it doesn't bounce back. Uh, and what that does, it just gives, it just improves the sound quality kind of so much that I definitely recommend it. And basically what we've then done is give you all the ability to record the podcast and actually with OBS, if you get creative, you can make it look good as well. But the most important thing is the content. The content has to be good. If the content's crap, it doesn't matter how good the setup is, nobody's going to be interested. They're not going to find value in it. And actually that's, you know, no good. So the one thing to focus on is talking about something that you're passionate about that people might find interesting. And if you have a particular niche or interest in a certain topic, it could be World of Warcraft, it could be coffee, it could be Call of Duty, it could, whatever you want to talk about, just find something that you're happy to talk about all the time. And actually, you know, you're passionate and your passion will come across and it's that kind of thing. But the point is content is so much more important than a better camera, better lights, better anything else. Get that right, do the rest for free, you're good to go. Okay, so next for kind of 100 to kind of 300 pounds level. So this is where we start to spend some money to basically take the basic stuff that people hopefully kind of already have, which I'm going to assume is uh, a laptop and that kind of thing. The first thing that I think you should spend some money on, I'm going to pop my pen down, is a decent microphone. So this is a Behringer, was it XM8500? This was give or take 15 pounds on the internet. It's an XLR cable microphone, so you have a few extra costs to do with cables. Um, but actually the sound difference with something like this versus any form of laptop microphone, phone microphone is like, it'll be a hundred times better. There's no question. Nice and cheap. Definitely, definitely, definitely do this is the first thing you want to do. The issue you have is basically when, so I have lots of kit on the table. There we go, I'll fold it down. XLR cables look like this. So you can't plug these into your computer, but this is what you get in guitars and lots of kind of audio equipment because it's really kind of good stuff. But what you then need is something like this. So this is the Behringer uh, UMC22. This is the one I actually use uh, today. This was give or take 50 quid, I think. But what you do is that you put the XR cable in the front and it has a USB output in the back and it's that that goes into your laptop. And basically what you can then do is transfer the audio onto your laptop so you can then stream it and you can put that into OBS as the audio source. So therefore for kind of 80 to 100 pounds with the cables and everything that you're good to go and that's definitely the first kind of 100 pounds or so that I would spend. Most people like to have um, one of these, it's called a pop filter. Um, my posh new micro now has it built in but actually what this is there to do is sit between your mouth and the microphone. And what that means is that when you talk, when you kind of expel air and you, and you, you know, kind of talk, it stops the air going into the microphone and getting crackle. Plus it kind of looks quite cool and anyway. But these you can get on Amazon for like 15 quid. And often it comes like a boom arm thing, which you know, comes as like a pack for about 40 quid. But actually the first thing you want to look at in terms of how you spend your money to help develop your podcast, keep everything else the same, have nice natural light, but just get a good microphone, get this kind of set up for about hundred pounds. So I'm going to say microphone. 
So definitely get your sound sorted first. That's so much more important than visuals. The next thing you wanna look at is that if you've got your brilliant content, you've got your everything else, happy days, you've got all this stuff, is then people again wanna look good on camera. What I would start with, and it depends on preference, is then on your lighting. So don't invest in a new camera yet. Lighting is more important than your camera in terms of actually creating a great visual kind of setup. One of the things I use, I'm gonna bring this in, you can see this. So this is a newer, and basically LED light. This one, you can do both different color temperatures, so you can have it as bright white or yellows or whichever. But actually, I purposely choose to have all of the stuff that I do as kind of bright white, as you know, that kind of thing. You can go to any hardware store and find a white LED light. You can get these for like 10 quid, 20 quid. A lot of people, and I actually used to have one, would will get a ring light. So basically, that's a light which is circular and the camera almost goes in the middle and it's a lot more flattering. Uh, I've since evolved kind of past that, but that's definitely worth kind of checking out. But the point is you can get a white LED light from almost any hardware store anywhere to really just help you look good. And definitely do that before you ex you know spend money on an expensive camera. And actually look on Amazon, it depends on your budget. And the one thing that I would say, if you can get two, and you want to light yourself from either side and ideally about head height because what that does it gets rid of any shadows you look prettier but then likewise if you wear glasses like i do if you light head on you'll see the reflection in the glasses and it's not great you light from the side you don't get any reflection and it's you know that's that's for me the way to kind of do it so then lighting and you can basically not to uh, you can spend thousands on lights, but I'm going to say hundred pounds again. And then if you've kind of done that, the next thing that I would look at still isn't the camera. And actually it's to do with your audio. The basically, if you have AirPods or even a traditional kind of um, video, you know, basically a headset for your mobile phone, what you want, and actually AirPods aren't very good, so I'm not going to recommend AirPods but it's the ability for you to hear the guest and hear the person that you're talking to without it coming back through the microphone. Does that make sense? So if you have a like a laptop or an iMac, the standard settings are that the iMac has a microphone and the iMac has a speaker and it'll play the stuff out and it'll try and be clever and basically not record itself, but that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is actually to have some sort of headset um, and that could be as cheap as the one that comes with your phone, which you'll already have. One of the things I do, because actually in the setup that I want is something where you can't really see it on camera. So actually I have these earpieces, sorry, it's all kind of tangled. And basically these sit behind my ear. Where are we at? There we go. I'll go for this one. So I choose just to have one in, and this actually sits in my ear and it goes behind my collar. But what it allows me to do is listen to the guest, but there's no audio feedback in the room. You try and keep the room as silent as you as you possibly can. And it just massively improves the quality and actually prevents a lot of issues, which I have had in the past, where basically the sound goes back through the microphone and it's not very good. And it's, you know, you don't want to do that if you can. But what you often find is most headphones um, have quite a short cable. So what I also have, sorry, I keep picking stuff off the floor as well, just a lot of stuff, is basically this. So it's a headphone extension cable. So this one's three meters. This bit goes into your standard headphones or what your earpiece, whatever you use. Those uh, earpieces were like 20 quid on Amazon again, not expensive. This cable's probably like a fiver, but what you can then do is plug this back into the back of your computer or PC and then be stood a few meters away. You can still hear them, but you're not tied in. But the point is it's all these little tricks. That's all the things that you kind of want to do. And actually, if you get all of that kind of stuff right, You've then kind of, you're within your 100 to 300 pounds budget. You've got your better microphone, the sound's good. You, you're well lit. You can hear them so there's no kind of echo. And actually I would still look at the kind of um, the soundproofing. That for me, the little um, foam squares that you get on Amazon aren't very good. I think actually big soft materials actually absorb sound much better. But basically yeah, you can either invest in um, Mine are called producer's choice sound kind of blankets, which are really, really expensive, really big and really heavy. 
but actually just pillows and stuff to really dampen the sound in the room will go a long way. And just on that topic, if you can ever have a quieter room or a room that has furnishings and stuff in it anyway, it'll be so much better. You don't want a big hollow echoey room because the quality will seem rubbish. So then once you've kind of got sorted and you've kind of got everything up and running, you're starting to build a following, you're starting to stream your stuff, then the sky is the limit on how much you want to spend on stuff to really develop the experience. I'm going to walk you through some basic stuff which I did over time, but actually you can spend easy up to £50,000 on a YouTube or live streaming studio without even any hassle. And it's all about diminishing returns. But the truth is your content won't get better the quality will get better, but it's all about the content. If people actually like what you're talking about and they interact with, that's the real value, not just having expensive kit. So never get confused kind of between the two. Um, I'm now going to start to talk about cameras. So this is one of mine. So this is a Canon EOS RP mirrorless camera. Um, this, I have two of these. One is actually what's shooting me now. This one is basically it has a 50 mil f1.8 lens on. If you ever see a stream where they blare the background and you see that on films and movies and TVs, you kind of need a specialist camera and lens to do that. So the reason I have two cameras, because I have two different shots that I kind of set up. One is from there where I have this on a tripod at head height um, to film. And then I have the special lens to kind of blare the background. And I've started to get to the point where I have different filters on to really kind of amplify and maximize that up. But if you're looking at a camera and lens like this, then you're starting to about £1,500 at that level. And this runs USB into my kind of computer. And that way, if you keep all of the other audio stuff the same, your visuals start to improve um, and you start to kind of build the stuff. On lighting, which is also equally important, there's no point just buying the expensive camera if you don't work at your lighting. When I do my interviews, I have a different lighting setup to what I have right now. But the way that you always want to do it, and there's lots of studies on YouTube and videos and stuff that you can follow, is often you want to be well lit, that people kind of can see you and trust you and whatever, and it wants to be quite flattering. So when I do my interviews, I have two of these, either side kind of head height from an angle, so that hopefully I'm well lit and it looks good. But I also have what's called a hair light. So on this camera, and actually even on this shot now, I have two of those behind my head. And what that does, it lights the back of your head. So it gives you a really good three-dimensional depth in terms of your image, and it separates you from the background. That in a wide shot like this, it's less important. But actually, there's lots of videos on three-point lighting setups and stuff that you can really kind of look at to kind of help set up. But the point is the camera on its own is good, but you want the lighting to kind of go with it. And I've probably spent a few thousand pounds on kind of lighting. Um, and again, the big difference is it depends on the area that you're looking to light. So if it's just you, a, a camera and a laptop to talk to someone, you can actually get away with not very much because you don't have to light a huge area. When I do this, I actually have several lights lighting the entire room. And that's a completely different challenge because you need a lot more power to light a bigger space and then it becomes a lot more expensive. Um, some of the popular lights are by a company called Aperture, um, which start about a thousand pounds kind of each. If you watch a lot of the really big YouTubers, they use those. They also do a slightly more budget line called the Amran uh, line. So I have two Amran 100Ds, which are 100 watt uh, power lights. I have a 200D over there. But then to create the uniform light across the room, and this is from a live stream setup, not from a podcast setup, Basically, I bounce it off the roof. So what you're doing is using the roof as a giant softbox to give a nice uniform light. But the point is, it's all of the little details and that to start to kind of build up. I use a wireless microphone. So this is a Rode Wireless Go, which is on a lav mic, which is here, which again goes straight into OBS, which kind of works. I have a, basically everything you can't see on the walls are covered in soundproofing. So I use producer's choice sound blankets, which kind of cover on the wall. So there's no kind of echo. And then you're starting to get into details on what things that you want to teach on. The, the office space higher itself, I have this room just to stream in. So that probably costs me about £9,000 a year. I have different laptops that are in the background. This is a 65 inch, 120 hertz TV, which doesn't flicker on the screen. The camera itself, this one uh, has an F4 wide angle lens on, so you can kind of see more of the room. 
you'll see that it moves. So, so basically this one actually sits on a 48 inch slider because I wanted the depth and it was all the little details that kind of build up. And even down to, especially for kind of YouTube, you then start to work on your background and what you want to show people. So something which is very popular, these things are called boiling uh, RGB lights. So this is the P1. I actually have five of these. And basically what these do, they're small LED lights. That's on. So it's currently on white, but you can make it any color you wish. And basically if you wanted to light the background of your shot in a normal room, they're actually one is probably fine. You might want two to kind of, you know, I used to change the background in all of my podcast interviews to different colors. One or two of these is perfect to do that. And they sell for give or take 120 quid each. But then you can see how these things all start to kind of add up. But it's all about the experience that you want to create and you know, creating your brand and that kind of thing. It's the experience that people kind of involve in. And one of the really popular things that people kind of get, it, they want, but I, just being honest, it doesn't make that big a, big a difference, is if you watch Joe Rogan or Logan Paul or whatever. So this is the Shaw SM7B. This is the, in many ways, people class this as the best kind of podcast microphone. Um, this in itself is give or take 350, 400 pounds. And it does largely the same as the one which was 15 pounds with the pop filter. For me, the visuals are quite important and almost it's that perception of being a high level podcast. But this, being brutally honest, most people, especially when you broadcast over the internet, won't hear the difference. But with this, you still have the XLR kind of cable to kind of transmit it. It still goes into this, which is the USB interface. But then ironically, when you start to go to more expensive equipment, you also need things like this. So this is called the cloud lifter, which basically takes the signal, which comes from the Shure SM7B, makes it louder before it goes into the USB interface, before it goes into the computer. But all of these different things, they're all kind of diminishing returns, which most people won't notice, if I'm brutally honest. And as you kind of start to build this up, you might have custom made neon signs, which are like 1500 quid and different laptops and different machines and multiple screens and lots of kind of different stuff to actually do your streaming interface on. Um, the cost starts to go up, but the, you know, the truth is, if the content isn't there, you kind of waste any time and you don't need to. So the point of the summary is that actually you can start a podcast for free and it'll be really, really good. And actually you're probably already 60% of the way there. If you spend say up to 300 pounds on some lighting, uh, a microphone and kind of get set up and maybe set up OBS for some stuff for, a, you know, say 300 quid, you can actually have a really good setup, which will take you 85% of the way there. And then if you spend 10 times the money again, you'll get that next 5%, but the truth is you probably don't need to, unless you do it for a business reason where you're looking to raise profile and it's part of a regular thing like this, which is I kind of do as well.